Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I work with visual regression testing. So let's get into it. Uh, so basically, the I'll tell you a very short story. Uh, the I guess two weeks, something like that now, where a coworker of mine came and suggested that we started using property-based property testing. Uh, in uh, a few of our just snapshots, which is, I mean, I told them that's a, it's a pretty good idea. Uh, and uh, then he did a bit of a, like a, a spike on the whole thing and he realized that uh, it's not going to be a good idea. And he, said, and he said, tells me the reason why it's not going to be a good idea is because I just tried it on one of our components. And after some basic math, they were going to do property basis testing with all of the permutation combinations that are possible for this component. We're going to end up with like 42,000 tests for this one component. And so I says, yeah, th that's pretty much what I suspected. But I, I sorry, I thought like uh, uh, I thought. Uh, it's probably a better idea for us to not run the permutation tests uh, as part of our unit tests. I cannot, not, we shouldn't do the generation as to, uh, together with the actual assertions. And he goes, what do you mean? Well, uh, what you're really after is to just generate the data and then to iterate over the data. And uh, he says, yeah, you could like, generate all the permutations and then create a JSON file, right? Yeah, I go, that's exactly what you could do. And I go, uh, you could do that and you can try and see how, like, how much that's going to improve your execution time because it's faster. If you generate the data, that's going to take a lot of time uh, if you do it for every time you run the tests. But reading in a JSON file, even if it's like 42,000 records, it's probably going to be faster, but the question is, are you really interested in having 42,000 tests running as part of your unit tests? Like, because it might not be the most effective way of doing it. And he goes, well, yeah, but I get that, but we could probably limit it to a few lesser, uh, a few smaller components. And I go, yeah, we could do that, but we could also try to just use it for visual regressions. So uh, I put together this little demo and I'll show you the way that I've done this before and I think it works pretty well. Uh, so basically the setup where we're going to use, like I've just used create react app because I just needed like, the, like all of this extra fluff here we can kind of forget about. The thing that is, in, is important, the two things that are important is this script here, which is called generate story data. And we're going to get back to that in just a moment. And then we have this script here which is called fixed button dot fixtures dot js which is the other part that we're going to look at and then lastly we're, uh, we have the visual regression tester is called loki so loki i just kind of stumbled upon that i stumbled upon it the other day which is it's kind of nice i'm i'm just assuming now that because based on what i've seen it was super easy to use it was super simple to set up you could have done like i mean that was my original idea i was going to do the same like uh, what i expect loki is doing under the hood uh, it's probably yeah, i'm using it uh, guessing it's using the chromium browser with puppeteer or something like that and just spinning up the browser going to storybook and taking screenshots because that's basically what's happening so i've already taken a few screenshots uh, screenshots so this is the current change let's take now let's look at the reference this is the stuff that we version control so you'll see here that what a visual regression test is if you haven't really looked into it basically at its simplest level it's just a screenshot of your visual component so what loki will do is that it will automatically which i think is so nice it was super easy to use let's say we say uh, npx loki test was it right and so what loki does now is that yeah exactly it goes it spins up the chrome uh, chrome browser uh, and well just goes to all of the stories in storybook and just visually diffs the images uh, of the like, the first time we do it it's just gonna we're just taking a snapshot of what the page looks like in storybook and then when 
we have these references, we can sh when we run the test, it's going to show us okay, what's the current, and it's going to sh show us like all right, there's also this thing called differences, and now there are no differences because I haven't changed anything. But let's say that I go here and I take my button here and I make it red instead. So I change the color of my button. It's now red. So we say Loki dot test, and Loki goes and sees that yeah there's a fail here because we do pixel comparison which is like that's what the simplest possible way you can do a visual regression i mean at my job we use percy for this which is a paid service but this is like the poor man's version i mean honest to god i can't really understand if i were to use something for my own personal projects or like something like that i would probably use this because it's so simple to use and now we would get a folder of differences and here we have uh, you can see here that sign up, yeah, it's pixelated, showing that, yeah, there's a difference here. And then, of course, we could like do something like this. We can see that, okay, here's the, I don't know, the, uh, let's look at this page here. This is our reference. And let's. No, this, yeah, something like that. Let, that's our, uh, that's the other one. Let's say that that's the one. Uh, example header. Uh, this, and, and let's open that to the side. And so you can see now that, uh, okay, no, nah. <laughs> I opened it the wrong way. Ah, it doesn't matter. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Basically, you see, you see these two. Uh, images and you see that yeah this is the visual difference and then you can just diff them like you can visually look at them and that's all a visual regression test really is and it's super nice i mean i love visual regression testing because that basically it basically guarantees you that you know that if you change a property or something like that that nothing unexpected happens and the problem with it though is that it's quite a lot of work so for this simple button here this is like the default button that we get with when we run create react app right uh, so this even with just these properties here we have quite a few permutations and that's kind of the thing right if you're gonna do this and you're gonna have like a really good capture strategy for all of the states because that's the tricky part right isn't that isn't it the for every permutation you have like what uh, one to the power of two one like uh, one to like i don't know like there's so many combinations of properties you can pass to this one button and if you're gonna remember how to create all of these things that's a lot of hassle and this is where the property-based testing comes in because what my coworker's suggestion like this is his idea basically we'll use something like in this case, I'm using, let's see, where is it? Yeah, the fixture. So uh, he, this is the library he was using as well. It's called Cartesian. It's like this completely, uh, it's five years old. You don't have to use this. Uh, you could build this yourself. It's not the complicated thing. Basically what it does is that it takes an object or an array, and then you can define properties. And you can say something like, yeah, okay, so we have the primary property, which is the same thing in the as in the button and it can be true or true or false and then we have an array here of different type of background colors and i'm using faker here which just fakes data uh, you could of course hard code this you could just say red or whatever because like that's there's fewer permutations if you don't have a lot of options but uh, yeah uh, and then it will just pick like it basically will create as you can, it would create a, a, an array with all the combinations of properties that we have defined here. And that makes it possible for us to generate a, a data set with, which is exhaustive, like with all the properties that you could, in all the combinations that you could pass to this button. And that's what, as I was saying in my little story there, and for him, he came up with 42,000 records because that's how many permutations there were. And that's extreme, but as I told him, uh, there is a situation where the size of that data doesn't actually matter. And if you do this, this is the thing I showed him. You create this function where if you call this method, it's going to generate all of these permutations. And then you do something like this. You create this little script where you just give it, like this is the simplest script in the world. It just takes an, like, the path to 
to a fi to the file which you were going to import, which is the the uh, button fixture. We pull in the fixture, we call get story data, and then we write it out to a JSON file. That's all we do. So we get this JSON file here, and here is all of our permutations. And if we scroll through here, you'll see here that there is some fake data. The reason why I love using fake data for this sort of stuff is because uh, when you're using fake data, it really shows if you should have, like if it really should be just any value. As you can imagine here, you see here, uh, we'll see that in just a moment when we look at the in the storybook. Uh, if you have like a button, like a designer or like a, a developer, like you always do this thing, right? Where you think that, oh yeah, this button will only have one word or two words or three words. But if you don't actually remember to put a restriction or like you use some type of overflow logic, uh, even in your test, your mental state will be that, well, uh, it's just gonna be one word, right? But unless you're actually impl implementing your button so that it handles overflow, it could take it could be anything it could break so by using randomness in your data structure in the in the in the data that you generate you actually get uh, you, you catch more uh, more issues uh, that way in my experience same thing with color like background color it uh, we'll see that in just a moment it's like a contrast nightmare in the in the color i got this time uh, between the text and the actual background color that i can set and as i said here in my little in my little comment here, the question is, should the background color actually just be any type of arbitrary value? Uh, and I'm pretty sure you're going you're gonna to agree when we look at it later that no, it should probably not just be any color. It should be an enumeration, an enum of something, something. Same thing with words, like we should deal with this. The button should handle different types of uh, input, right? So now here we have our JSON structure with all of this stuff, right? And then we go to the final step, which is the story in the storybook story. And this is the where the magic happens. So basically all we're doing now is that we import this JSON and then we just loop through all of those data structures. And then we uh, prepend it with the like the data that we passed into the, the button and then we just spread it like this. And what we're left with is this. We're left with this very nice list of like where every button combination, like you see the properties, you see the component, and you see like you can just scroll through. I mean, it, uh, even for really long, as you, this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, this you would have never most likely caught this if you did it manually. That well, in the if it's not a primary button, well then the text is black, but you can pass in any background color. So yeah, that doesn't really look all that nice. Maybe we should do something about that. Oh, well, maybe not. Uh, maybe we will never make that mistake. Who knows? And the same thing goes with like, all right, here we have a really long button, etc., etc. Now, why is this so useful? Well, because when you do the visual regression test, because uh, if we do this with, we can do it with snapshot testing in just as well, which is not a bad idea by any means. But what I like, what I really like about this is that when we load this into storybook it's its own thing it we don't really care so much about this being a super fast operation because loading all of this stuff and rendering it to a page i mean sure if it's forty thousand records then i would say maybe we should split that up into multiple stores and just load them on different pages but when we're running loki loki just goes to this page and takes a screenshot and that's the beautiful part just taking that screenshot is a lot cheaper than running a bunch of unit tests on top of this. And you, what we are left with is something like this, which I think is so nice. Uh, let's go to the, yeah, let's open. This is the current one. And let's open that in the side menu. And so let's scroll and let's go and check. I don't know how many times I clicked that thing now, but yeah, as you can see here, uh, here we are, that's the same size. So here we are, and here, like even in just Visual Studio, I can just see, I can go through here and I can see my visual differences. And because I'm printing out the properties, it's super easy to see what, like, okay, what, uh, what did I give like uh, if I want to convert this now 
to like a unit test or a snapshot test or something like that. I know exactly how to do it. I just grab, I know to go and grab this data from this, this record, put that into my unit testing thing, whatever, and the component, and then I can take it from there. And this is super cheap now to do. Uh, uh, to do. And I mean, you still have your own, uh, you should still create stories for your components that are functional that like the designers or other stakeholders can use to like interact and click and do all that stuff. But adding just one or two of these like bulk things that just creates all the permutations like this makes it super easy to do visual regression testing and uh, yeah it's uh, i can only say good things about this i've only had good experiences so hopefully you found this useful uh, as i said the secret is very simple you just uh, create a script that generates or using like uh, cartesian or like you can use any library you can write it yourself it doesn't really matter uh, that generates this json structure with uh, all the different permutations and then you can add a little bit of randomness in there if you want to and then you just load it into storybook uh, and loop through and create a story that is just for visual regression testing hopefully this was useful to you have a great day